going on my friends welcome back to another tutorial today we're going to be breaking down schoolboy q featuring 21 savage floating music video that just dropped recently as well as we're going to hop into premiere and after effects i'm going to show you step by step how you can recreate some of these cool effects shown um i just want to mention that it's directed by jack beggart and dave free um jack beggart one of my favorite music video directors so i'll leave a link to his website below if you want to check out some of his other stuff i think i'm going to title this tutorial video create a movement for music videos because as you're going to see as i press play here they have this really consistent cool look jittery effect going through that really drives the whole video so i'm going to talk about that show you how to do that but i'll also show you some of the other effects that go on so it might be happening a little bit too fast so let's just rewind a bit you might not have caught it but this little effect that we have going on with the car this is actually the same effect that was used in that drake and travis scott sicko mode music video where it's locked onto drake's face it was also used in that new um i think it was like a beats headphone commercial with lebron where they lock onto the headphone in people's ear as it's running you get this really cool locked on effect i'm going to show you how to do that i've talked about that before and after effects it's actually pretty simple throughout the rest of the video you get all these cool zooming in and outs and this choppy kind of broken down look now i'm not playing the music just so there's no copyright violations but we can still break down the video this is pretty normal here they probably use some masking to kind of get the other people in the background to be jittering using speed ramping to isolate the subject here now we're going to talk a little bit about motion control throughout this video and ways you can use motion control at an advanced level to maybe at a beginner level create some interesting shots that you'll see throughout this but like I said, we want to keep it brief. So let's move along here. Now, the effects aren't what makes this a great video. What makes this a great video is the planning of the shots and the transitions. And if there's anything I want you to take away from this video, it's not the tutorial you'll see after this. It's just the way they're able to pull off these seamless transitions and things that make sense and make the video flow as a whole within the edit. That's one of the most important things you guys should take away from this. So let me show you some examples here. We're going to press play. And I know everything's happening a little bit fast and jittering, but this is a perfect example of a seamless transition where one shot flows perfectly into the next now you can do this like this by just matching up the subjects like for example zooming in on someone's face but as you see if I go frame by frame this is one shot this is the second shot and it's just an easy seamless transition just like that now it's pretty easy to do that with anything like a subject all the way to shapes I think I'm gonna make a full tutorial talking more about this because it's something very important in making a video flow and making it look really good so like I said this happens very fast but we'll try and play through you have the camera panning to the inside of the dashboard and then we have a zoom from the dashboard as you can see you have masking and then you can see the mirror here keep in mind keep an eye on that as we zoom out a little piece of that mirror is crossed into this next shot of the car so that's how we can keep that flow feeling very organic like you're really being pulled away from the inside of the car and seeing the outside of the car just like this so something like that is just really smart planning really good editing that's what makes this flow very well we pan over to all these buildings now this could be now this could have been created in some sort of 3d software or could have been put together using compositing to create the building like this but essentially what it does is it brings us into our next scene which is just a built set scene and the cool thing about this scene right here is they use motion control so what a motion control device is it's something where you place the camera on it and then you use built-in software where to be able to record a specific movement of the machine with the camera on top of it once you have that movement recorded you can play that over and over and over so that every single shot your camera will be doing the exact precise movement every single time so for example what they would do is you have your set here you would tell all the extras the girls to go jump on the bed do all this crazy stuff in one scene and that's it cut you would have one scene of him by himself dancing cut that scene you would have one scene of maybe these girls on the left dancing since every single one of the camera movements and all of those shots you just took are exactly the same from the motion control you can use masking to just pop them in and out of the scene just like that it's very simple i'll leave some tutorials down below if you guys are more interested within that but we have some cool stuff going on here with zooming out this zoom could have been done with motion control in the camera to make it kind of pan out like that or done with after effects cameras and post and then we have some cool kind of jitteriness with the building that they put together from scratch. Now I'm guessing they took a time lapse of a building and then they applied the same exact effect and then probably went in with a lot of grueling details to create this scene as a whole. I love what they did here with the window where they probably green screened somebody hanging out of the window where they probably green screened somebody being held outside of the window. I thought that was a cool idea. So I showed you the main gist of the video. Let's hop into Premiere and let me show you how we can recreate some of these effects. So if we take a quick peek back at this, you'll notice that a lot of these shots are kind of like one takes. They last for a long time and then they're sped up in post later to create this kind of jittery effect that we were talking about. So something like this where we have him walking all the way from the store all the way outside. That's how you can see the full extent of the effect. We have some spinning around objects 
always looks pretty cool so let's hop back in here i've got a shot to kind of match that we have this kind of slow walking shot like this let's go and see if we can speed this up and kind of make that jittery effect okay so the effect we're going to be using in premiere to pull off this jittery look is called the posterized time effect so go to your effects and presets library search up posterized time some of you may be familiar with this from past tutorials we're going to use it in a different way make sure you don't do posterize the style one or it'll look like that use posterized time so we'll drag that on our clip and if we select our clip here and then we go up to the top left in our effect controls so this shot was shot in 24 frames per second so when i play that out it'll be the exact same because it's matching the frame rate but what you can do is you can lower this value and essentially what it will do is artificially change the frame rate look of the video so if you wanted to play something like two frames per second play that out and you'll get this kind of um, slow pictures picturesque look now that's close to what we're going for but it's too slow so what we need to do here is right click on that clip and go to speed duration and then and bump this up to something like I, I would say anywhere from 300 to a thousand so maybe something like 400 we'll see what that looks like so that's pretty similar to what we we're going for and of course so every clip is going to be different I would always recommend playing with the different frame rates and the speed that you're working with to get different looks depending on the frame rate that you shot in as well as the length of the clip itself this is a pretty short clip so I didn't speed it up too much now there is a way like I said to do it with pictures and then string them all together into a video I think this way is just a little bit easier but I'll leave a tutorial to the picture way below as well and the picture way is the way that was made more popular by all of the Sam Colder Taylor cut film kind of um, cool hyperlapse travel video effects that you guys might have seen but anyway so we talked about that okay now let me show you how we can create this lock on effect that I was speaking of like this well you'll notice that the scene is really locked on to the front of the car whenever it's popping up so we'll play that one more time watch the skyline as the car moves up the skyline moves up so you can tell and then as the car moves down skyline moves down you really tell that the camera is locked on to this front of the car so what they did was they placed a track point here in after effects and then they used the built-in after effects tracking to be able to create this so let me show you exactly how to do that so here we are in after effects and it's pretty easy to set this up you don't have to create any nulls like you would with a normal motion track you don't have to create any after effects 3d cameras all you need to do is just right click on your clip over here go to track and stabilize now if these options are grayed out just double click on your clip because you're in a composition so we'll double click here so that we're in a layer and then if you want what you can do is actually click here Control shift D to make a little cut there and then if you want what you can do is just cut out the um, clip if you are in the layer if you're using page up page down to move frame by frame so you have the exact part cut like that and you can now right click on it and then go to track stabilize and these apps and these options are back up so we're going to go over to track motion i'll bring this over here so that you guys can see it better here's my tracker window that should have opened whenever you click track motion if it didn't just go to windows and then find the um tracker right there so in our track motion what we're going to do is you have a few options you have track camera warp stabilizer track motion and then stabilize motion we're going to select stabilize motion i talked about this in the sicko mode drake music video tutorial i made it's pretty easy we're gonna place it somewhere on his face usually i like to select a nose some lines of symmetry like the eyes usually after effects will do an okay job with that so once you've done that all you need to do is press play here and it did an okay job the cool thing about this stabilized motion effect is you don't have to get it perfect if it's in the general area then you're done then you've done fine if it goes off a little bit too much like for example goes to a shoulder here what you can do is you can just take it and fix it and it'll kind of adjust now once you've done that go ahead and click apply and it'll say x and y just say okay and now let's play this out. For this specific clip, it's pretty jittery, um, but that's usually what you'll find with this kind of effect. It gets pretty jittery because it's trying to lock onto something, and when there's a lot of movement, that's when the jittery comes in. So if there's a lot of movement, you're gonna get that jitteriness, which goes well with this music video in particular. There's not as much crazy movement. If it's like an up and down motion, like the car, then you'll get that more smoother locked on kind of deal. So we need to do one more just in here. You'll see that we have all these black edges. An easy fix is just take the video and kind of scale it up and then scroll through. And if you see a black edge, adjust it more so that there is never a black edge showing. I'm going to go ahead and redo that on a different clip because that first example wasn't that good of a clip to do it on. But we'll go ahead and see if we can get a better result on this clip. And it'll be an easy way to reshow the steps so that you guys can remember better. So pretty easy. Right click on your clip, go to track and stabilize and then click track motion to open up your tracker and bring up your track point once you've done that just click on stabilize motion one of your four options here i want to delete your first tracker as well so take your second tracker the stabilize motion tracker 
place that on the face that click play and like i said if it messes up just like this one did you can manually just take the keyframes and adjust it if it is a short clip like this okay, so we've made our adjustments to track on his face now we click apply and then okay now this example turned out a lot better and i think a lot more uh similar to the effect that was shown in that music video so that's a little bit more of a smoother track of course we're gonna have to scale this up again as well and there you go we have more of a track onto his face jittery looking effect just like that so this is what the clip looked like before play that in kind of just sways in with the camera like that and then this is the after locked onto his face we have some jittering the results are always going to be different based on the clip but that's the basics of it so those are the two main effects that were shown throughout the video guys i hope that you took a lot more than just what i showed you in premiere and after effects there's much more to this video that makes it good than just knowing how to do the simple effects it's really knowing how to apply those effects that makes the magic come together fully so i have two kind of sister tutorials that are related to this coming soon the first one is going to be talking all about zoom effects and the best way to use zoom effects and create advanced looking zoom effects a lot of people say that zoom effects have died a lot of people use zoom effects in the wrong way that just don't look as good i'm gonna make a full advanced zoom effect tutorial showing how to make it look good it was used great in this video it was used, it was used great in a lot of other videos that i'll be talking about second i'm also planning on making a video completely dedicated to the subject matter transitions that you guys just saw such as two hands like this transferring into the next scene which is two hands again so perfect planning like that with the subject matter i want to make a full video completely dedicated to not only creating these subject transitions but also using it with shapes if you guys are interested in this motion control scene here with people changing in the background and the recorded movement I'll, I'll leave a tutorial that i made speaking on that as well as i'll leave a tutorial if you guys really like this building scene here where you guys can use element 3d or some other 3d softwares to create cities and if you want to create this composite look for a city i'll leave some composite tutorials as well so anything that wasn't in this video will be in the description hope you guys did enjoy this like i said let me know in the comments what you want to see next let me know if any of the things i suggested interest you and you really want to see them or you don't want to see them everything will be taken into account anyways guys thank you so much for watching thank you so much for supporting and we'll see you guys in the next one